Prof. Ole Johansson, we are so happy to start this series together and we've called it In The Know. Do you want to tell us why? Uh, I think uh, it's very important to realize that there is a lot of knowledge around the functional impairment electrohypersensitivity. It's not a matter of guesswork or a fairy tale, as someone said. Uh, so we will present some of the basic data around this impairment. And if you say functional impairment, many people don't know what that means. What does that mean? Oh, that's a modern word for what we used to call in the 50s and 60s and 70s handicap. And then it was changed and in English it became disability. And again, it was changed. It still kept as disability, but more modernly it's called functional impairment. And even that has recently been changed into functional variability or variance okay. uh, because it points to that every human being during his or her life will be functionally impaired. I could give you a quick example. Mm -hmm. When I, for instance, travel to France, the moment I touch down at Charles de Gaulle Airport in Paris, I become functionally impaired because I cannot speak French. It may sound like a funny story, but it's not. This is the United Nations definition of functional disabilities or impairments. Mm -hmm. So therefore, everyone is now and then impaired, especially when you are a child and a teenager. Mm -hmm. So, in Sweden, EHS or electrohypersensitivity is a functional impairment, am I correct? And what is the implications thereof in Sweden? Um, that goes back to the year 2000, and in parallel, two things happened. First, the Swedish government at the time recognized electrohypersensitivity as an official functional impairment. And just as a quick sidetrack, no one needs such a recognition. The United Nations press very strongly on that a uh, functional disability or impairment is always private and personal. You, Davida, cannot decide if I can speak French or not. Only I can tell you if I can or not. Mm. So you don't need any recognition. You know for yourself. Mm. And that's very typical of electrohypersensitivity as well as parallel impairments like multiple chemical sensitivity, mm -hmm. they know what's mm -hmm. going on, you know. Uh, and here in Sweden, the former Social Democrat uh, government recognized this, and that was very good, because it did give them a highly legal status. They get the governmental subsidy, they have their own uh, association, etc. But also the same year, 2000, the Nordic Council of Ministers uh, describe the symptoms uh, mm -hmm. that an electrohypersensitive person uh, has uh, and named it as an occupationally based uh, symptom diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And that, that you can here in Sweden get, for instance, economic compensation, sick leave, etc., based upon only mm -hmm. your symptoms. Mm -hmm. But still, the recognized culprit is only the toxic environment, mm. nothing else. Mm. So here in Sweden, people with electrohypersensitivity are persons. They are not patients. They don't have a diagnosis. They are not ill or sick. Mm. They are functionally impaired because of the environment. 